Oh, Hi James, good to meet you. Nice, nice. To meet thanks you. for joining me out in the freezing cold. No worries. Did you no check worries. the weather report when you came up? I didn't know. I looked outside <laughs> and it looked really sunny, so I was like, oh, perfect, shorts weather. It's not too bad actually. And uh, meet Rigby. Rigby oh, is my colleague's um, dog who I'm looking after today, so I hope you don't mind him pop popping along with us today. So, yeah, thanks for joining us for, for this chat today. So, it'd be great to get um, a bit of insight to your. Well, your life here at the university and um, yeah. your, you know, your coming out story and stuff. So yeah, give me a, a, a little bit of background about yourself. Please. Yeah, so sort of, I'm final year mechanical engineering. Um, so feeling quite old on campus, but <laughs> hey ho. Uh, sort of moved here from North Yorkshire, so small rural town in North Yorkshire. Uh, so moving to the city has been quite insightful. It's crazy, you can get a bus, then it comes every seven minutes or something like that. I'm, <laughs> on I'm time? To, on time as well. Wow. Uh, so you don't have to plan your day around sort of getting a bus that comes every two hours. Um, but yeah, so sort of growing up rural North Yorkshire, it's sort of, there's not many gay people around, no. uh, to say the very least. If there are any around, is it kind of like the, you know, the only gay in the village type vibe? Genuinely, or? yeah. I think there was, the there was one cliche. in the town and I was with my driving instructor once and he was like, oh yeah, see him, he got beaten up at the street corner kind of uh, thing. Was like, oh. So not a good experience. <laughs> not, not great. So no. did that hind I mean, I, I assume that hindered your coming out of the story. So you, uh, oh, did you come out when you was uh, in your village or have you come out? Yeah, yet? so it's sort of what I wanted to do when I came to uni. I was like, look, I've got no sort of pretenses. I've got no one sort of with any Clean expectation. Slate. So when I came to uni, I was like, look, I'm not going to go into the closet from the get go kind of thing. I'm going to just be like, yeah, I like guys kind of thing. Yeah. And um, um, and how was that? Was it a, a, a bold decision, an easy choice? Or? I mean, it was always it was always going to be scary, um, uh, but it was sort of you kind of find your people at university yep. and sort of I guess everyone from the LGBT community just kind of clusters together. Yeah. I don't know if you found that. But. Yeah, I mean, when I came out, it was I, I was the only person that didn't go to sixth form college. Oh, okay. So I did a performing arts diploma. Yeah. Um, so I got to, yeah, the, the first class was like, oh my God, they're everywhere. <laughs> there's loads there's, of me. Loads it's of great. Hi, hi, hi. So it was it was just this instant gratification. Yeah. Of like, this feels right. I'm now not alone. And it's yeah it was a good feeling so Definitely. oh that's a bit, that's really good that the the, the university culture has uh, allowed that and as yeah. and what how was weird though was going back home after that oh okay because it was very much like you turn the switch back off uh, did you um, notice a change or did family notice a change in you i i felt a change sort of because you just kind of become sort of, not more secluded but you just kind of you're not as open and as expressive about your experience if yeah. you're like you and that's always different about. with family anyway, isn't it? When you've been with your peers and then you go yeah. back home and... Um, so it was a bit weird, even sort of most of my friends at home still didn't know. So when we were meeting up at Christmas, I was like, I've got all these stories to tell of what I've been up to, but I've got to like leave out certain sections because I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> can't tell them. And has that changed over the years since you've been going back home? Or yeah, it... so you sort of become, you sort of get to a point where you can just feel like you can drop in these comments where it's like, oh yeah, I got with the guy last night kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then they're like, hang on a second. <laughs> yeah. so... Did he just say that? <laughs> How was your coming out experience back home? Basically, I come from a, a Catholic family, and so I came out to my siblings first, and sort of it was over Easter holiday, I think. Didn't tell mum and dad because I was I'm quite close with the siblings. Um, exam season hit, I got a text from my sister, and she's like, "By the way, I accidentally told oh, dad." God. Oh god! No. And it was like day of my first exam, and I was like, oh, it's, "It's such a crushing feeling oh, no. when you get that text," and it's like, "Oh no." Sort of went back for the summer and still didn't tell mum, but I was in that awkward situation where it's like, "Okay, dad knows." but mum doesn't and right. if it comes out that dad knows and mum doesn't it's going to cause a problem because she's going to think oh no like what is he is, does he not feel comfortable around me that kind yeah. of thing how was your father how was your dad yeah he wasn't he wasn't too bad actually he was pretty uh, pretty good about it um he's fairly chill about these kind of things it was sort of i then later came out to mum and dad sort of probably about october time the second yeah. year um and it was, it was still weird, I, I don't know if you get it, but you know when you just can't say, oh, mum and dad, I'm gay? Yeah. It's always like a, oh, I'm seeing someone. Yeah. And his name is <laughs> bloody blah. Yeah, mum found it quite hard, actually, because uh, sort of, she's from working class kind of family. Yeah. And sort of, so she's had kind of seen the side of it that I, don't, I think she's, she's more concerned for, for my safety yeah. more than anything. And she sort of... But that's the thing with parents, they hear so much negative yeah. connotations with the whole LGBT community. Yeah, that and they... she was sort of growing up kind of in the AIDS crisis where yeah. there, were, there was that kind of level of sort of hate and just in, in general, yeah. sort of general discourse. So it's, yeah, it's... I think she was more worried for me rather than kind of like a, oh, I don't like this. It's more of a, I'm concerned. Kind of yeah, thing. and that's good coming from a Catholic upbringing, isn't it? Yeah. In that sense, because, um, yeah, because religion can pay quite a... 
Well, it, I mean, so many people's <laughs> stories, religion yeah. could be quite a hefty sort of decision-making oh, yeah. process of, you know, people being ostracised from their family just because of the religion. So yeah. that's a really positive experience that um, that's come out of that. Doing a sport like American football, like, I feel like I can kind of pass quite well as being straight. So I sort of, it's the classic cliche of, I, I like I don't bring it into I don't bring it up in training um, yep. because it's not really relevant. It doesn't have any impact on yep. my ability to go and tackle someone. So I, I just never mentioned it kind of thing, but never said anything like, oh yeah, I've got a girlfriend kind of thing. Yeah. And tried to hide it. Um, but what that meant was that people didn't realise that sometimes when they would make a gay joke or oh, okay. when they would make a comment or a joke, um, they didn't realise that that was like not okay because they thought that they could get away with it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it got to a point where sort of I think there was there was something said in the group chat, so in front of everyone, um, and I was like, look, I can either say like nothing, do nothing about it, or I can just say something to them privately, yeah, or I can say something in front of everyone, um, and it was over Christmas holidays, so I was just like, right, let's bite the bullet because if I say something now, hopefully it means that these kind of things won't happen again. It's yeah. not like I have to keep having these conversations. Um, so I basically in the group chat like, look guys, I'm, I'm gay, this is not okay kind of thing. Oh, okay. Um, oh, that's which very was brave. quite scary, uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, but saying that, I've, I genuinely was not expecting the level of support that these oh, guys okay. gave. Like, there were just so many people messaging me being like, hey, that's sort of like, that was really brave of you, like, good on you for kind of sort of saying something. Yeah, uh, no, definitely, that is. And so many people like hearting the message. So it was, it was really nice. I wasn't expecting that level of, of kind of support um, because, again, like while they, while people have stereotypes about gay people, sort of I've also got these kind of misconceptions about like how people are going to take it. Yeah. So it's, it's well, especially when you've heard like you know uh, it, jokes used in a negative sort of yeah exactly context, sort you, of. You, you're gonna you're gonna naturally come to those assumptions. So did the person that you know said that. Um, that said that joke or in that that, that way um, come forward to you yeah personally. no he was he was he was really good and apologized so um, I think it's just it's just a case of people don't know that they're sort of what they say has an impact on people yeah wider like on a wider sort yeah of and that's a good and, and that's you know that that goes across you know all walks of life is yeah. you know the the choice of language and I know you know, there's a lot, a lot of sayings from back from back thieves that now you think actually they're very racist, but they were just everyday sort yeah. of terms that. And growing up, and this is the thing with uni is you've got such a mix of people. You've got a range of people who yeah. have been at uni for three, four years, whatever, and you've got people that are coming from like school that basically just turned 18. Yeah, where that kind of thing just gets said. Like I, when I was back in college, you get you get called gay all the time. And yeah, it's just kind of like lad culture I suppose. Yeah definitely. Um, Have you experienced any negativity um, since coming out no, at all? No absolutely not. All, which, is, which, which just further kind of sort of proves in my mind that it's like it's just a case of saying something um, and people I feel like people aren't bad people. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it sounds dumb but nobody goes out there to be malicious. No. In the in yeah most of the time at the very least. Um, so A lot of it's down to education, is it? Or that exactly. fear of the unknown, so, yeah. which, which you know, leads exactly. on to education. So. Yeah, definitely. So it's, it's just having that, that bit of visibility kind of thing is yeah. really important. My LGBT friends are the friends that I made outside of uni through sort of, there's a, there's a LGBT football team yeah. uh, in the city. So I, I go to that and that's where I, I meet my people kind of thing. Yeah. Because they're sort of, they're like me, they're guys, they, they play sports, but they're yeah. also gay kind of thing. So it's, it's weird because like at uni, I've got my friends that I made in first year, um, and and that's about that's about it. Really. Yeah, um, I mean that's great that you know that the community have got got so involved and included in society yeah. that we you know we're not now oh you know all the gays together and that's yeah. it. Whether you you know you've got the same commonalities apart from being gay, yeah. it's great that um yeah that you that you're reaching out to the your football yeah. crowd and we've got like common interests where it's like a oh we're we're both gay. And we've just found out that we like sports rather than uh, we both like sports and oh, yeah. we're, we're both gay kind of things. It's it's a bit it's a bit of a weird one. Um, so it'd be nice to see sport get a little bit more diverse and sort of have more of that structure behind it and yeah. have a bit more of a like an LGBT presence. I think. I mean, it seems to be changing. From I mean, I know a lot of footballers, you know, professional footballers are being outed rather than coming out. Um, but do you think it's 
do you think that will ever it, it's going in the right direction? Do you think that you know the football culture? I mean, do you do you follow football? Or, yeah, yeah, so I'm a Middlesbrough fan. Oh, okay. Since, so um, yeah, it's. It's do you want that going on camera, one. or do you? Not? Oh yeah, that's fine. That's fine. My granddad, my granddad would be well proud of me. Um, <laughs> it's slow progress. Yeah. And I think the World Cup. There were several steps back there. <clears throat> yeah. Because how can you say that we're trying to make progress in sort of inclusivity? Yeah. When you then go and give the world's biggest football tournament to a place where you le legally can't be gay. Yeah. Like that's that's mad. And you kind of you take a step back and you've got the likes of Josh Cavallo and you've got. Jake Daniels that have just come out fairly recently, um, but there's no one in the Premier League, and yeah. there's what twenty odd teams, each with eleven players yeah, on so the pitch. So there's some silence going off there. there it, I find it baffling yeah. that there are not more people. There, there's clearly a problem whether or not gay people feel like they can't take part in sports, or whether pe the gay people can't, like yeah, gay people don't feel like that they can come out in that environment. But to have what two hundred twenty odd players in the Premier League and not one of them be gay. Yeah. Is baffling. Yeah, the ratio is um, a bit off, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you can look at the census data and it's like, do the maths yourself. Yeah. It's crazy. In terms of role models and, and things, and do you um, do you put upon yourself the pressure or, or do you think, actually, I've got to be a role model for the sports industry? Is it difficult to sort of get that balance or have you thought yeah. about it? What's... I, I, it's, it's a tricky one, <clears throat> obviously. I'd, so I, I just play American football. I don't feel like many eyes are on me kind of thing, but I think it's quite important because for a lot of the guys, well, I'm, I'm not sure I might be making an assumption here, but I think I am the first sort of LGBT member of the community uh, that plays sports that they've seen sort of yep. so up front and had to deal with so up front kind of thing. So there is a, there is a little bit of pressure. It's like, okay, do I what do I do? Do I play into the stereotypes? Do I kind of be like, no, I'm just like you kind of thing and yep. try and blend in, uh, which comes with its own problems? Or do I just kind of try and do what I want to do and yeah. sort of live my life as how I want to do it. Um, I, I mean, think that's the that's the that's the angle. People are now, you know, being their authentic selves yeah. and not going to the stereotypes. Of, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, because my sort of representation that I had visually growing up was uh, the Julie Clarys. Yeah. So it was all the camp sort of, you know, this is the thing, yeah. very feminine, very, you know, it was a particular stereotype. And I think that has its place as well. Yeah. Like it is so important to have members of the community that can sort of wear their heart on their, sh on their sleeve with, for want yeah. of a better word kind of thing. You can do American football, I also do ballet. And it's like, yeah. you don't have to feel like you have to fit into one little niche. You can wear many faces almost, and that's still perfectly valid. You yeah. can do what you want to do, do, just do things because you're interested in them rather than sort of fulfilling a kind of a, a self sort of, yeah, facade almost. Yeah. So yeah, growing up, what, did you have any sort of role models visually within sport or not sport that you sort of yeah. identified with them or, or, or even in you know or your community back home or anything? Was there anybody that, you, that stood out for you? For like? me, sort of growing up with the rise of YouTube and Instagram and TikTok's obviously a little bit later, but um, I found lots of role models online. Yeah. Um, so sort of the likes of Troy Sivan, who sort of YouTube music kind of thing. Um, just, yeah, like, YouTube in movies as well. There wasn't a whole lot of representation, but then looking back as I've sort of watched the movies that I really enjoy, I'm like, hang on a second, this person, this person is gay, like or, or queer coded at the very least. Yeah. Like I watched Doctor Who and I look at Captain Jack and I'm like, oh, oh <laughs> I didn't notice that before. Sort of the role models that I've had have come from outside of my community um, purely because there wasn't the role models there. Yeah. Um, which is why I think there is such a need for representation and positive representation and diverse representation in media. Yeah. Um, and it cracks me up with sort of the likes of Harry Potter. I was having a conversation with my sister once and um, she was like, I was, I was complaining about the diversity there. Um, and she's like, oh yeah, but Dumbledore's gay. And it's like, oh no, not really. <laughs> like, it was said after the fact kind of thing. It was a, a post thought. So that's that's probably a case of like not great that, like representation. Um, but we like, yeah, you look at the likes of what Disney Plus and Netflix are putting out these days and it's so nice to see. Yeah. Like Heartstopper. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. But oh, I've not seen, no, I've not seen that. It is incredible and just to see have that sort of, I feel like I'm beyond the age where I feel like I need that to kind of feel okay in myself. Yeah. Um, but to see that other people will benefit from that kind of media, it's it's so positive and so uplifting. I think sport definitely is one of those areas where I feel like we could do better. Yeah. Um, I sort of, yeah, we've, we, we've gone through the points kind of already, so I don't want to repeat myself, but 
<laughs> we do we do still need the diversity uh, within sport. I mean, you have got some great role models. Look at Tom Daly. Yep. Uh, look at Gus Kenworthy. They Gaz are, Thompson as well. Exactly. It's it is in the right direction, but I think in mainstream media. Yeah. Uh, because sort of the Olympics comes around every four years, kind of thing. Um, it's quite easy for them. Where, yeah, it's quite easy to sort of have them there and be like, yeah, great, we've got some LGBT athletes, and then they go back in their box kind of thing yeah. to, until they come out ne the, the next four years. Um, so I think we, it would be great to have role models within sport. Yeah. Um, I think that's really important. Oh, definitely. Having, having friends and, and family to support you is really, really important, I think. When I first came up, it was an instant like, oh, so what is it with, and it was like this intriguing sort of personal question yeah. that people wanted to gain. It was like, oh. After a while, it's like, yeah, come on, I, I can't keep saying this. This is a bit too I, I much. I quite like then. that, though. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's a, a different perspective. I totally get your frustration. Yeah. But I quite like that it's part of normal conversation now. Yeah. So when I'm out, I was out last week with the guys from American Football going to Crisis and GD. Um, and like we were just having a conversation about like what kind of things we want, like we do on dates kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'd be more than happy to chill in bed playing Lego Star Wars. And these guys okay. were like, wait, you can just have a morning <laughs> in bed playing video games. What's going on? So it, it, it's nice to be able to joke about that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's nice to be able to have these conversations yeah. and not feel like I'm <clears throat> left on a, like in a corner kind of thing. Yeah. And, I feel like it's better than them just kind of being like, okay, you're gay. We're not going to talk about that kind of thing now. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to have, yeah, that kind of that conversation because, um, again, it shows that it's it's normal. Yeah. It's, it's nothing, nothing crazy. Um, you don't feel isolated, but you also don't feel spotlighted. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah, it's and really it allows important. you to be open as well, as well, exactly. which makes you feel comfortable and validated, I guess. Yeah, and it, and it's nice because hopefully that means that sort of their experience with me sort of just having these regular conversations they can then go out and sort of challenge if something like this happens again yeah if they if they encounter discrimination I, I would hope that sort of through their experience with me they would feel like they can confront that or yeah. sort of deal with that in a better light than just sort of shying away from it again yeah and have you had that conversation with them to sort of sort of Approach their allyship, and you know, if there's anything that they would struggle with in those scenarios. I've had a couple of guys being like, "Look, I've sort of, <clears throat> sort of seen what you said on the group chat. Um, like, uh, I'll try and challenge it, sort of, yeah, uh, going forward." And that's, <clears throat> I think, that's really positive, and I think that's what we need because there is such a strength in having someone that isn't gay saying that homophobia is not okay. Yeah, because there's no, there's, there's little risk of them facing backlash. Yeah, and it kind of. It shows that they're kind of looking along amongst their peers and sort of trying to sort of raise the bar. Yeah. There's a kind of concern that things get said behind your back when you sort of you leave the room, but knowing that you've got allies there and the people who care about you and people that sort of understand the kind of the struggles that you're facing, um, it, I think it's really powerful to know and to be able to trust <clears throat> that these people will be able to kind of yeah. fight your corner a little bit. Um, and so that's. That's really relieving. Yeah, no, that's good, and that's you know one of the focuses of, of staff within universities. You know, the whole the network and the allyship. It's it's really validating to know that there are colleagues out there that will step up or will question things or will push yeah. back on you know these kinds of, of yeah. your behaviours that come towards. And uh, yeah, within the staff, I mean, sort of <coughs> my sort of dealing with with the staff, like the, the coaches at American Football are incredible. Like yeah. I've, I've spoken to them about this issue and. They, like I, I have 100% faith that they've got my back kind yeah. of thing. There is no shadow of a doubt that they are committed to that kind of thing. So I've got no nothing to complain about yeah. sort of the staff at uni and, and just American football in general because they are so supportive. You're always going to get sort of slip ups, the vocal minority yeah. saying stuff. And it's how you react to that yeah. that really shows your character kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. That's a that's that's a key message. Is you know we are going to make mistakes, even Absolutely. within our community. I mean, we make I, mistakes. I've, I've misgendered. I've, I've made all the, the faux pas kind of thing. Yeah. How you try and show that you're committed yeah. to being better next time. Yeah, I think that is really crucial. No, that's definitely that's a good a good message to take. So moving on to like pronouns. So I, I yeah. go by he him. I go um, by he him yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so and I know that's an ever changing you know an ever changing landscape yep. um, within the community. Um, are there any particular words <clears throat> that are or, or phrases or anything that that really um, resonate with you? I mean, for me, it's um, that we've taken back queer. Yeah. Even though I don't consider myself as queer, because I always consider queer as the young, edgy, edgy, <laughs> edgy community, <laughs> and I clear, clearly I'm not that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I just love that we've taken that back and yeah. owned it, and it's like a, a good 
sort of spread of representation within the community. Yeah. Is there anything that, that resonates with you? Yeah, so I identify as gay, um, but I definitely see the strength behind calling back queer. Yeah. Um, because sort of, I, I guess labels are important, um, and I think we shouldn't shy away from that fact. Um, and queer is quite a nice one because it's sort of non-straight, if that makes sense. It's yeah. a bit of a catch-all umbrella term, which I think is really powerful because as you were saying earlier, you were sort of came out as bisexual and you came out as gay. Yeah. Uh, it was that box. Later. People want, yeah. people, what society wants is in boxes. People put you in pigeonholes. They're like, oh, yeah. this person's gay, this person's bisexual. And yeah. queer is like the whole yeah. the wall kind of thing. Yeah, it, um, it encompasses everything, which is, yeah, which is why I just love it so much that, um, yeah, it's yeah. this thing that you sort of say it to, to people and they go, oh, it's like, I really like to, I really like to yeah. say that. It's like, yeah, cool. I think it's, it's, it's such a, it's a <clears> generational <throat> thing as yeah. well. Um, so, um, Sort of while I was working on placement last year, I was part of the LGBT sort of network there, and there was one person that sort of was like, "Oh, can we say that? Like, are we allowed yeah. to call it?" A but that's queer great that they word? asked that question. Um, I think that's I think that's wonderful that they asked, "Is it okay to say that?" Yeah. So it's 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 an interesting one having the conversation around labels. I think there is some sort of there is strength in also not feeling like you need yeah. to have a label. Yeah. Because the way I come out, the, the easiest and most natural way is it's like, "Oh, I." like got with a guy last night or oh I'm seeing seeing a, seeing a boy going yeah. on a date with a guy um, and that doesn't it doesn't feel as jarring yeah because it's straight people don't say oh I'm straight every yeah. single time yeah it, they, it doesn't happen they're like oh my girlfriend is doing this today and yeah. it's like it, it just it feels so much more natural when you don't have to say oh, I'm gay yeah kind of thing definitely um, <clears throat> but Again, it's going back to the point of there is strength in labels and, and being able to kind of identify as part of a community. Um, there is there is empowerment there and being yeah. like, okay, this is actually what I am. Because when I was growing up, you sort of you have these feelings and you're like, I'm broken. What's yeah. going on? What's wrong with me? Well, um, yeah. And then sort of through the, the representation in media and sort of uh, through seeing seeing the community out in the, out in the wider world, you sort of you figure out you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, this is this is what I am. This is how I identify, kind of thing. Um, and knowing that you're part of something like a wider group yep. is so powerful. And that you're making change. And, and that you're not isolated or broken. So my job, if you hold it like that, so you've got to try and like strip it away. So you press down and then rip. Oh, that's a um, shock. And so, yeah, um, so your placement, did you go to placement uh, abroad, was it? In, no, no, so it was, it, it was in Derby. Oh, okay, all right. So <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the glamorous world of Derby. Oh, okay. Um, so it's a it's a smallish company um, working in the rail sector. So sort of quite a, a male dominated oh, yeah, industry. Yeah, construction. Um, it was it was good that there was such kind of want and kind of they felt the need to have like a, an LGBT network kind yeah. of thing, which was really powerful. Um, so sort of yeah, I just got involved in that because I think there was there was an article or something in on the local internet, um, oh, okay. and I was just like, let's get involved in that. Kind oh, of that's thing. really that's really good and sort of um, yeah, sort of a question I was going to say about um, rainbow washing, you know, like yeah. for History Month or Pride where. You know, all of a sudden, everybody's got their you know logos yeah, and yeah, rainbow, yeah. And then rainbow the moment, colours. And then the moment the first of the next month comes along, they're like, nope, back to back to ordinary colours. Yeah. Um, so it's great that businesses are te you know are, are continuing that through throughout yeah. the year and, and sort of providing those support spaces. Yeah, definitely. There's there's an interesting conversation to be had though, sort of because it is a global industry. It's like okay, we do business with governments of these countries. How do we how do we broach the topic of we've got yeah sort of a diverse workforce that maybe won't want to work kind of thing yeah. for these companies, for these, for these government organisations, um, which I think is totally valid um, and it's a tricky topic to be had. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, the world is not everything that you want it to be. I quite, I quite like it when people ask me questions yeah. because it shows that they care and shows that they're invested. The questions are never like, a, oh, I'm trying to pick apart your argument kind yeah. of thing. It's, it's always like, oh, I'm interested in to like, hear your experience because it's different to mine. Yeah. Um, so it is quite nice having having people ask questions about it it's getting to a point where like i don't feel like i'm the sole sort of the only gay in the village yeah. kind of person because there's so many of us like even in american football there's, there's it's more than just me yeah. like um so i don't feel like it's i'm getting to a point where i'm the sole kind of yeah okay you are the the target for for these questions kind of thing um but i guess yeah it's that, that's kind of come about from everyone just kind of being more open and honest yep. about these kind of conversations, I'm still I still feel quite young in in in, in oh, that so respect. Oh, yeah, so do I. So do I. Yeah, it, it is it is cool seeing the, the younger generation sort of coming out 
uh, more and more. Because um, I think the more we talk about it, the more people feel like that they can come out. Yep. Um, so it, is, it does become easier. It, it, not, it does. Not that it takes away from people's stories, but yeah, it is. It, it's, it's more socially acceptable, um, which, which is really good. Um, but so I think the, the thing that I'm finding more interesting is kind of obviously you've got your, your gaydar kind of thing. It's becoming harder and harder to yeah. figure it out because because more and more people are coming out and not feeling that they need to fold yeah. into the stereotypes. Um, but also so, more of the straight community are being their authentic selves. So yeah. you could have feminine straight men. Exactly. Or, it's, it's, it, it's, the, it's the line between sexuality and yeah. masculinity yeah. have nothing that you can you can be anywhere on that scale and they are two separate scales yeah. obviously there, there may be a correlation but that doesn't mean that because so and so's camp yeah that doesn't mean that they're also queer yeah um yeah so yeah i feel like it's it's sort of i don't have much experience in kind of feeling like i'm helping the younger generation come out more yeah. because I feel like they got it. And I think that's why it's, it's really important to highlight people's different different people's perspectives as well because I feel like it's very easy to kind of yeah. uh, fold into the, oh, we, we want to do a, an LGBT interview. Yeah. Let's find 10 of the most queer people that we can. Yeah. Um, whereas it's, it's nice to be able to have that kind of, that diversity where it's like a, hey, you can be gay and you can do American football. Yep. You can be gay and do crochet. Like there is sort of, yep. there is nothing that's holding you back from doing any of those sports um, or any of those hobbies. Being, yeah, your sexuality has no impact whatsoever yeah. on your hobbies, your interests. It's just do what you want to do. Yeah, you might face sort of backlash, but as long as you're brave and open about it, hopefully that you can you can succeed in whatever you want to do. And I think that's a really powerful message yeah. where it's like a you don't feel like you're, you need to be held back by these social structures. And I think university is a great place to do that yep. because you are in such a supported and sort of secure environment um, to be able to explore, like doing contact sport, doing, yep. doing rugby, doing American football, doing climbing, whatever, you can do that. And there are people in that space that will support you if you come into issues like I have, yep. or, or I'm sure many other people have, have experienced something similar. Um, my sort of key thing from this is, you know, with pronouns and is, um, you know, avoiding misgendering people, is kind of like neutralising language. Yep. So like, it oh, just makes yeah. it so much simpler and so much um, easier to to get it right on the off and not have to worry or be fearful of getting it wrong. This is the, this is the the the, ma the most common thing that I have an issue with um, is when I'm in an environment like I was at the gym with the PT. Um, <clears throat> They were, they were like, oh, so have you got a girlfriend? And I'm like, like it was just small talk. Yeah. But immediately, when you're in that situation, you've then got to, you're confronted with the decision, you've got to come out. Yeah. Thing. There's, there's the cliche of you come out, at, like you don't stop coming out. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you don't feel like you should need to. Yeah. Um, so if you use, like one of the easiest ways to avoid that is to be like, have you got a partner? partner. Or yep. even more casually, are you seeing anyone at yep. the moment kind of thing? It yep. doesn't have to be, oh, have you got a girlfriend? It's just not, it, it doesn't feel like in this day and age it's necessary to assign a gender to that kind, yeah. of, that kind of thing. I feel like when people ask, oh, have you, are you seeing anyone? It, it makes it so much easier because it's so much less of a big deal when yeah. you're like, oh yeah, I've seen this guy at the moment. Um, and then you can just sort of go from there rather than you're confronted almost with a wall where it's like, a, how, are we, how are we getting over this wall? Are we, yeah. are we sort of brute forcing through the wall? Or are we skirting <laughs> around it? Or being like, oh, I've not got a girlfriend. Yeah. But uh. avoiding, <laughs> avoiding the issue where it's like, a, yeah, but I am seeing a guy at the moment kind of thing. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a weird one. But yeah, definitely it's about having those conversations about where pronouns play, it, yeah. play, it, play an importance in conversation. It was it was tough. So sort of growing up in in North Yorkshire, you don't quite get the diversity um, that you maybe do growing up in a city, um, and sort of growing up in a religious house, you sort of you brought up to be told that that kind of thing is wrong. There's no two yeah. ways about it. Like I remember growing up, feeling like I was broken, I was doing something wrong, and something so intrinsically about me yeah. was so flawed. And that, that does something to sort of, as you're growing up, sometimes I, I wonder why I was so shy as a kid and I'm like, yeah, because I was beating myself up every night, kind of being like, oh, yeah. this is, yeah, I shouldn't be be like this. Um, so sort of really, I, I sort of came out um, when I came to university, it was 
sort of a bit of a watershed moment where it's like a I'm going into a new space. This is a blank slate. Yeah. None of my mates really are coming from coming to coming to Nottingham with me. I can just kind of be who I want to be, and there are no sort of pretenses, no sort of expectations. Nobody's thinking, "Oh, James is straight," because we don't know each other for yeah. that long. We haven't known each other for that long. It was quite liberating coming to university and just being like a. And it was an went, easy step, was it? To yeah, sort of... I remember going out to, I think it was prison in the, in the first week or something like that. And one of the girls was like, oh, what's your type then? And I just was like able to describe a guy. And I was like, <laughs> There's no, it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything wrong here. Yeah. Um, and so coming to university, you find your group of people. Um, and it was nice to have a group of friends who were all pretty pretty queer. I think in, in second year, I lived in the house and the majority of us were queer. Because oh, okay. we all just collect together. Um, so that was nice. It was just interesting when you go home after that situation. And how was that? What is it difficult to sort of yeah. find your authentic self that you found at yeah, university? Yeah, because you or... feel like you've made so much progress. Yeah. Sort of at university, and you're like, yeah, this is who I want to be. This is this is this is how I want to live. I want to be able to say who I am, kind of thing. And then going back to going back home, you instantly should back into a box. I joke, it's like you're going back to Narnia because you're going back in the closet. Yeah. Um, and so. It's it was it was tough and like so I just remember that Christmas being like first Christmas back was sort of back in the closet um, and then it like it wasn't until Easter um, Easter holidays that I kind of came out to my siblings um, and even then sort of mum and dad still didn't know and it was another six months after that oh, okay um, but yeah so it was yeah it's it, it was it was interesting sort of having that double life kind of thing because you've got your friends at uni and you've got your friends at home and. There's not that much of a, a bridge between between them. How are you, how are your brothers and sisters? Or are they? Are, is it brothers and sisters you've got? Yeah, or? yeah, older brother two uh -huh. and two sisters. So, yeah, they were they were they were they were totally fine. Um, I think it's sort of it's nice when we're all at the sort of a similar age level, where it's we're all in this in the same generation effectively. Um, so none of them had any issues, kind of thing. Sort of with my sister out and me to my dad, uh, that wasn't as fun yeah. and it sort of it causes a bit of mistrust because it's like a there's there's this thing that I really want to tell mum and dad that's really important to but you me. you need to be ready to do it. But I need to be ready yeah. to do it, feel like I'm comfortable to do it and at the end of the day it's it's my not even a secret to tell it's 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 my thing to say yeah um, and to have that taken away from you whether by accident or, or whatever it's it's really tough to to go back on that kind of thing. You trust the people that you tell to not out you kind of yeah. thing um, and that's part of the the process of coming out is who can you tell to trust yeah to not go and, and spread it I, I was sort of forced into coming out yeah. so i yeah made a mistake of um yeah getting caught out of where i stayed one night and then go to work the next day and then my parents ran my friend that i was supposed to be staying at and yeah her mum picked up and was like, oh no, yeah, they didn't come back here tonight. So uh, yeah, so I got asked the question from my parents after all these, oh no, it wasn't even text messages, we didn't have mobile phones then. Yeah. Um, I've um, got back home and it was like, you're not gay, are you? And so I was like, well, no, I'm bisexual. And, yeah. that was, and that was it, so yeah, but that lasted two weeks and then it was like, no, I, I am gay. So it was, it's that thing of coming out as bisexual then was like, is that going to soften the blow? Is that going to make yeah. it? But yeah, easier, think, but it still wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you raise a good point where it's like a. I, I know a lot of my mates came out as bisexual, <clears throat> like yourself, um, and then come out as gay later, um, and it's almost, it's almost you're clinging to that straight side. Yeah. Obviously, but like yeah, bisexual. Obviously, being bisexual, it's not like a you're half straight, half gay. Yeah. But it's sort of when you're in that position, it's like, do I come out as bisexual because people still might see me in the end yeah. being in a sort of a there's a that hope of the you know carrying on the family name you know yeah. through that sort of and i think that was that was the thing that really um sort of one of the things that worried my mum was kind of she has a plan for me and sort of she she, yeah. she saw me kind of settling down with sort of a wife and having kids yeah. and she'd have grandkids um, and i think for me to come out shattered that kind of perception of kind of how she saw me growing up yeah so i think that was one thing that she had to unlearn is like a um yeah he's not gonna have kind of a wife and a family like yeah. she like she's had kind of thing. like society expects us exactly to have, but the, yeah but at the same time like i still would like to get married i'd still like to yeah. have kids and it's sort of 
So I don't, there's not that much change. It's just with the person that yeah. I'm sort of raising a family with in yeah. the long run, hopefully. And even that's, yeah, that's a, a you know, an ever evolving yeah. you know, um, uh, construct that we're, that we're going through and we're introducing and we're, you know, we're, we're kind of battling through as a community. Is, yeah, definitely. Is that something that doesn't fit with the social norm? So. Sometimes you get asked the question, it's like, if you, it's more amongst the sort of my queer friends. It's like, if you were, if you could be straight, if it was a choice, would mm. you be straight? And I'm thinking, I remember, if you'd asked me that question two years ago, I would have been like, yeah, it would be so much easier. I'd be able to fit in. I wouldn't have to go through all of this. But like looking back now, I definitely feel like my personality has been derived from, it's not completely because I'm queer, but my ability to challenge like and be more confident in in who I am and what I want yeah. is derived from the fact that I've had to say no to the sort of social norms and I think that is really powerful and that's a, that's a like a learnt thing from having to deal with this kind of thing yeah. um, deal, dealing with sort of figuring out your sexuality it's sort of it's it's made me who I am today yeah. because if I'm not happy with something I now feel like I'm in the position where I can be like hey no, actually, I'm going to go do something different because I've done that for my life, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because I've, I've I've lived in that sort of that heteronormative lifestyle, and then I thought this isn't me. Yeah, I'm going to switch. And you just know something isn't right, don't you? Yeah, you just, you and feel it. Sort of coming out is one of the toughest things I've done in my life, and so to be able to have learned that and be able to say, oh, I can do that, so I can make a change now. A simple, a, like a, a probably a trivial example of this is like in American football, I started off as linebacker and then I wasn't enjoying it, wasn't sort of getting the place I wanted to get. And I was like, if I, I, I question if I was straight, like would I have been as eager to be like, okay, this isn't working for me, let's change yeah. kind of thing. Um, possibly, who knows? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a game of what if and you can spin it around in your head as much as you want. Yeah. But it's like, a, I, I definitely, sort of more willing to make a change and to sort of figure out what's best for me because I've had to. Yeah. It does define to an extent who you are, but at the same time, sort of, it's not my whole identity. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I'm gay, but I also, I'm so much more than that. Yeah. Like I, like, sort of, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's an interesting point where you kind of, what is your personality and, and who are you kind of thing. It's multiple things and, and being queer is just part of it. Yeah. And, yeah, if, if it's, it's great if you want to make that your personality and power to you kind of being able to do that. But there are so many other things that make up a whole yeah. for me that I'm like, yeah, I do American football, I do ballet, I do Dungeons and Dragons. Like, I like trains. Like, yeah. it's, it's, there's so much more to kind of, more to life than just being queer. In terms of like the, the flag representation and the rainbow yep. flag and the progress flag, how do you feel about having that as like the sort of iconic uh, or the sort of symbol that, that, that brings to you? So like, you know, if you're in, in the city and there's a flag flying you think, oh it's a gay bar great or yeah how do you feel about that representation in terms of i really it like it yeah. i think it's really important that there is sort of such a visual representation of allyship or, yeah. or queerness because the thing that i find difficult with being gay is that it's such a non-visible thing yeah it's again i can kind of straight pass a little bit um, once you get talking to me, you probably that, that, that perception is probably shattered quite quickly. <laughs> but um, you kind of you need that kind of visualization to be able to see, to be able to have this conversation. Yeah. So when you see pride flags, like on, on flag posts or outside a bar or something like that, like it's it's so easy and so nice to be able to be like, yes, that is that is somewhere where I can be safe, yeah. kind of thing, and not have to worry about sort of going into a different different bar in a new city kind yeah. of thing I mean like kind of hold my boyfriend's hand and kind of do this kind yeah. of do that um, it just makes things so much easier and so much sim yeah. more simple um, which is sort of it almost ties into the sort of being out and proud kind of thing because again if you're more open about it if you're more visible about it it just makes everything so much more simple yeah. um, which is which is really nice but sort of the I think because obviously we've got multiple different pride flags we've got the progress flag we've yeah. got the standard one there's, there's, there's a variety of them um, I think they're all really important. It's nice to have sort of the main one that everybody recognizes, yeah. even outside the LGBT community. But I think I cannot understate the importance of having the different, yeah. like the different flags, because sort of again we, we talked about intersectionality. Um, it's sort of it's so important to raise the voices of other people who maybe don't have the opportunities to, to talk about it as, as as maybe maybe I do. 
Um, so it's, yeah, the, the flags are so hugely important. Yeah. Um, and they also make a great wall decoration as well. Definitely. The message that I want, like, for people sort of in the LGBT community is, like, don't feel like you've got to fit into a box. Yeah. Like, you can do sports and you can do the typically masculine sort of things and you shouldn't fear for the backlash or for, like, the, you shouldn't build it up in your head that um, you're going to face kind of the homophobia. You might do, and that's a problem for, for if you come across it, um, and I'm sure you'll be fine in the long run, provided you've got the support that you need and you feel you can. Um, but I think sort of people outside the LGBT community, um, within those areas where it might be more tricky to come out or, or be inclusive and uh, yeah, be, be queer in those spaces, I think it's, it's really important to go in with an open mind and not have any presumptions about A, what queer looks like, yeah. and B, sort of how diverse your group is yeah. because I think when the mistake gets made when people think that everyone who does a similar hobby to them is exactly like them. Yeah, like the societal norm is that oh everybody in football is misogynistic yes. or it's kind of like yes. this is the stereotype you, and it's that stereotype in the cliches. So like yeah. this, or you do American football so you're yeah. this or you do football so you're a yeah. hooligan or, or something like you're, that. you're gay and you do this. It's like yeah. those cliches that we're, we spoke about earlier that society puts upon us, we put upon ourselves that we're kind of trying yeah. to smash. So it's kind of like, yeah, what's, how, how do we smash that? What, where do, how do we go from there? And how, yeah. I think it's about having these conversations, yeah. you know. I think it is the more people open up and the more people talk about their experiences, the more people realize that, look, not everyone is like you. We have, we have similar interests. But there is strength in that diversity yeah. and to be able to see someone and think hey we've got similar interests but you have a completely different life perspective to me yeah i think that's really positive yeah. and really strong the queer experience is is so different for every single person that like i can't i'm, I'm cisgendered uh yeah I'm, I'm gay but i'm also white and there's 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 sort of a difficulty where it's like a people of color have a completely different experience completely exactly. different background yeah. growing up transgender people again have a completely different struggle yeah there's there's similarities but every person's experience is completely different my experience to coming out is completely different to yours yeah um and so i think you need to you need to remember that and yeah. sort of when we're when we're trying to speak for the community it's very easy to be like this is my experience and this is the universal experience because it, it's just yeah not. definitely i mean I, I i have alluded to that um off camera with with the team it's just saying actually our experiences you know it I've not taken away from ours, and they are slightly different in generation. But yeah. my story will, you know, back in the mid mid nineties, will be so different to somebody of a uh, person of colour who's yeah. coming out, or a person with disability who's coming out. Yeah, so, it, and it, uh, you know, it, I say things are getting easier, um, but yeah, for other people in different intersectional communities, yeah. it's it's going to be completely different. Um, yeah, definitely, and it's about supporting people because obviously I can I can be empathetic to people who are coming out in a, in a similar way to mine, but it's it's remembering that I've had these struggles. Yeah. Someone else might have had that struggle and been able to deal with that really easily because they've had a really supportive yeah. family. Um, or I found this really easy because I've had such a good group at university to, to be around, but um, someone else might have really struggled with yeah. that. Um, and so it's just being mindful that not everyone is like you, even in a community like the LGBT community. Yeah. Um, and it's about supporting and raising the voices that need to be heard, um, while also sort of making sure that it's yeah heard in the, heard in the right way. So I just want to thank you for your time, being no, no extremely open with me, and to hear your views on a, you know, a younger gay man, <laughs> you know, 20, 20 years younger. It's, it's been lovely to chat to you. And yeah. Uh, no, I wish you all you your best um, with your. Um, trip abroad uh, Canada is it you're hoping to move to uh, anyway if it, if it lands post university <laughs> I wish you yeah wish you all the best and yeah thank you very much Greg great to meet you